Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back after a long time. So, today is a very interesting day. We have the most awaited solar eclipse of uh, this year. It's the solar eclipse in the sign of Aries. Uh, it's happening in Ashwini Nakshatra. Uh, if you see the degrees, I am here in drikpanchang.com. So if you see the degrees, uh, we know an eclipse occurs when sun and moon are uh, in close proximity to Rahu or whenever there is a, or, or Ketu or whenever there is a full moon okay, in close proximity to Rahu Ketu. So this time if you see sun is in uh, 5 degrees of Aries, then moon also uh, in Ashwini 5 degrees uh, Aries and then Rahu is in 10 degrees Ashwini again. So this eclipse is occurring in the same zodiac sign uh, for all the three uh, because sometimes if Rahu Ketu are not in the same sign but if they are in the uh, adjacent zodiac sign even then an eclipse can occur but now all the three are in the same sign and they are in the same nakshatra also and they are also in very close proximity so they are around like uh, if you see sun is almost at the end of 5 degrees and uh, Rahu is around you know 10 degrees so around 5 degrees the eclipse is there okay and uh, moon has of course crossed the sun so <clears throat> uh, therefore the eclipse is now completed uh, now what happens during an eclipse is uh, Rahu or Ketu uh, or you could say both Rahu and Ketu they try to impact the sun and the moon which actually represents very strong parts of our personality okay so therefore the sun uh, gets eclipsed which means our ability to think long term think from a perspective of uh, purpose and definition of our life that can get altered sometimes uh, if we are not very uh, strong emotionally and spiritually and intellectually so uh, the best thing to do during this eclipse is to chant mantras like you can chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya that will give you freedom from fear then Om Namo Narayanaya that will give you freedom from anxiety <coughs> and you can also chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare this mantra will give you freedom from bad habits and uh, indulging in wrong stuff okay so therefore you know, if you're feeling that uh, today it's a bit tough on your psyche, then well, uh, maybe you can chant these three mantras and um, uh, try to avoid uh, doing prohibited activities today. Okay. So, now the thing is, what is this eclipse about? This eclipse is in the sign of Ashwini Nakshatra, which is the nakshatra where life first comes into. So Ashwini is the nakshatra that signifies uh, growth and infrastructure, development, uh, tunnels, roads, uh, bridges, uh, aeroplanes, buses, trucks, cars, horses, right? So movement basically, anything that helps you to take uh, something from one place to the other, that's what Ashwini nakshatra is about at the end of the day. <clears throat> so you can... Uh, read about the Ashwini Kumaras, you know, Ashwini is also about medicine, health and uh, um, holistic health, not just, you know, allopathy or uh, any, any some random uh, health procedure. But it's about uh, holistic healing, um, comprehensive healing, holistic overall development of a person basically, not just physically, but physically, mentally, intellectually, spiritually. So... Ashwini nakshatra is a very interesting nakshatra because it is where everything ultimately starts and it is where you start building the infrastructure. It is where um, everything in a way begins, okay. It's like the beginning of all beginnings, okay. As Lord Krishna says, you know, I am the beginning. <laughs> he also says something else. Can you write down uh, in the comments? So, now let's go into individual zodiac signs and try to understand what is going on okay 
so depending on your lagna this eclipse will fall in a particular house okay all right so let's start with aries so for aries ascendance this transit is starting in your uh, this eclipse is occurring in your first house so what is the first house the first house is the house of your health your um, body the first house is also intelligence because it's the lagna it is the lagna is known as dhi which is intelligence okay and that is why jupiter gets digbali in the first house including mercury so now when you say there's an eclipse in the first house does it mean that you will have a, a, a problem in the body well not necessarily but it could bring up certain issues related to the body which uh, you might read yourself okay so for example you may be thinking oh i'm just lying uh, without doing any exercise so you may start going to the gym or maybe you even if you don't feel like you could go to the gym or start doing some yoga or exercise you know put uh, eat healthy uh, listen to good things listen to good people okay because uh, health is not just physical it is also intellectual so because if your intellect is corrupted then your uh, physical health will also deteriorate it is just a matter of time so keep a watch on who you listen to keep a watch on um, what kind of books you are reading you know what kind of people you are associating with so anything that <coughs> uh, pulls you down it uh, makes you more lazy it makes you more negative it uh, gives you complaining nature it gives you doubt fear anxiety depression <clears throat> stay away from all this okay and on the other hand you should uh, do things which make you more positive you know read nice books uh, read books about positivity spirituality read, read divine vedic literatures and uh, overall it is the time where you not just focus on your health but the lagna is the king of all the houses so you have to bring your life in order now and now is the time that you can make certain changes in your life if you wish to uh, which will actually uh, empower you to be happy in the long run also okay so therefore keep a note on things which are making you un unhappy in life and try to distance yourself from them them and bring positive changes into your life so if you do this uh, then uh, you will be able to be happy intellectually and also physically and then you will see every area of your life is improving you know your uh, relationship with uh, your profession your married life your health your spiritual life everything is in improving okay so therefore uh, see where you need to prioritize what and then depending on your mahadasha and antardasha it will be decided what will happen okay so now let us go to taurus so what is taurus for taurus uh, this transit is happening in the 12th house okay so uh, the eclipse in the 12th house can bring opportunities for foreign travel uh, it can bring opportunities for um, some cases uh, where you have to do some expenditure to gain something ultimately so for example <coughs> Uh, you might uh, want to start your own business and for that you need to make a large investment okay so for that this transit may be good so uh, if you want to make a calculated investment somewhere uh, which is uh, going to yield a lot of profits later on then this is a very good time uh, you should do it this can be beneficial for you okay <clears throat> and apart from that if you are already in a foreign country then this might be a time where you might uh, try to seek a permanent residency there or a change of citizenship some um, or uh, you can get a long term visa you know? so if you are already there and uh, if you are planning to go and you know that something will come up like you know some program for bachelors or masters or phd in the next 6 to 12 months then you can apply now maybe it can happen <coughs> and along with that if you um, have a good third house in your original birth chart and you have the number seven in your date of birth 
Uh, so for example you are born on like um, 7 january for example or you are born in 1997 uh, for example or you are born in july for example or you add your date of birth and that goes to 7 so then uh, your probability uh, of going to a developed country is exceptionally high so if you have 7 in your date of birth and if you have um a supporting transit during uh, I, I mean a supporting dasha during this upcoming year then well um, you can go so if your fourth house is associated in the dasha then you might go for education okay or ninth house could be masters or phd uh, or if your tenth house is associated you could go for an on-site job opportunity so um, it depends on um, what your dashas are indicating and depending on that you can understand how this will figure out so because for some people if the dashas are not good if the sixth house is indicated this can also show that you might have to be visiting the doctor sometimes you know there could be some expenditure or <clears throat> seclusion because of you know some hospitalization or something like that um, not trying to create fear here but yeah that could be a possibility in the worst case okay thank you now, uh, the next group of ascendants is none other than Gemini Lagna, Gemini ascendants. So, what's going on for Gemini? <clears throat> so, for Gemini, this transit is uh, going to occur in your 11th house. Now, what is the 11th house? 11th house is the most powerful house in this Kali Yuga. So, what is the 11th house? 11th house is the house of gains profits networks associations uh, connections uh, wealth name fame power position authority um, influence okay now of course some of these things are from the 10th house but the 11th house also indicates all this okay so uh, if you have uh, a good dasha during this period then you can have exceptional success okay and uh, 11th house is one of the most favorite houses of Rahu because Rahu likes materialistic gains but what people forget is 11th house is not just materialistic gains it is also a spiritual gain in general so it's gain of any kind basically okay so therefore uh, if your dashas are indicating the 10th house uh, then you may have a great professional success you might get an extraordinary promotion this year <coughs> Or you might uh, get, get, get uh, another job which is, you know, beyond your expectation. And uh, apart from that, you know, you could have a childbirth. So if the fifth house is indicated in the Dasha, there could be uh, birth of your first child or your second or third or even more. And 11th house is also the house of marriage uh, because it's the house of associations, right? <coughs> So, if your um, Mahadasha or Antardasha is indicating the second house or seventh house, you know, then uh, there could be possibility of marriage. Or if your Mahadasha, Antardasha is of Venus, then also there could be a possibility for marriage. <coughs> and if your uh, planets in the Dashas are indicating the fourth house and the twelfth house, then there could be purchase of property, there could be purchase of vehicle. So, so essentially you can't just say oh 11th house is gain so something good will happen well that is certain but uh, the question is uh, what kind of gains will you get okay so for that you have to check your dashas okay and uh, if the third house is indicated in your dasha so it can show you are getting some big permit from the government so it can, could be a long term residency permit or a pr or a citizenship of a developed country or anything like that okay but overall your name fame will increase and your influence will increase so all the best make the best use of it okay so now we come to cancer lagna what's going on with cancer cancer ascendance for you this transit is in the 10th house wow that's one hell of a transit because if you see uh, this eclipse has so many planets involved right so if you if you exclude uranus you can see sun moon mercury rahu they are in the 10th house and you know very well 10th house is the house where sun gets directional strength and 
that is the house which is known as the midheaven which is the house of name fame power position authority influence administration leadership mm, so therefore this is the time when you need to do something big in life okay now big in life doesn't mean you have to be anxious uh, and you have to be depressed if you cannot do something big but uh, it essentially means that now is the time when you have to go to your next level okay so if you have certain big plans in life you know you want to start your own business or you want to go and um, get a big job or you know in some very famous company like google microsoft amazon or whatever you know some apple some other fancy company then this is the time that you need to do if you are planning if you if you think you deserve a promotion then now is the time that you should talk to your boss regarding this and maybe if you put it in a proper way and if you deserve it then it can happen okay and our 10th house is also the house of administration so uh, if you want to go to a administrative role or a manager role you know within your company then that is also something which you can do and if you are already a manager you can go to maybe uh, you know a vice president role or if you are senior manager or maybe the cto or the ceo or whatever i mean the sky is the limit for you now okay so therefore uh, and even if you are a new join you have started your work you are around 22 years old and um, even then for you you may not uh, get a big position uh, externally but you need to uh use your administrative skills in the company and uh show yourself and others that you can be a good administrator you don't have to man manage uh, projects worth of uh, billions of dollars but uh, within your team you can manage yourself properly first you know as they say charity begins at home and then you can manage your fellow team members uh, at least whoever are your equals and then uh, that's how you can uh get more success for it okay so therefore this is the year for name fame power position authority so use it properly and go to the sky because for you sky is the limit all the best cancer so now now we discuss leo lagna so what's going on for leo for leo lagna <coughs> now this transit is going on in your ninth house mm hmm now this eclipse is in your ninth house so ninth house is the house of higher education is the house of phd masters post doc and it is also the house of religion spirituality law rules regulations it is the house of your guru uh, it is also the house of your father okay so therefore uh, this is a very interesting combination because uh, rahu generally does not like the ninth house but because uh, there is an eclipse in the ninth house uh, there will be new beginnings related to the ninth house so <clears throat> there could be a situation where you might go abroad for a higher education okay or ninth house is also sometimes the house of awards and recognition so you might get some prize or award or um, anything which you actually deserve as per your karma and your actions one thing to watch out is uh, your relationship with your father you know this can be a bit strained during this time <coughs> or you know, your father's health could uh, require some attention this time and ninth house uh, not necessarily represents only father it can represent father or fatherly personalities it can represent your grandfather grandparents anybody who is senior to you okay uh, in the previous generation of course so their health might require some attention and on the positive side um, ninth house is the house of gurus guides and counselors so now is the time if you want to seek some guidance now is the right time if you want to uh, if you want some help from somebody who is experienced and more knowledgeable than you then go to that person in that respective field and ask for personal guidance because now you have this transit so they will help you the energies of the universe will 
come in favor of you when it comes to guidance okay so it can be online guidance offline guidance or it could be the other way around it which means you could also uh, start teaching you know you could also become a teacher that is also something which could be on cards but most likely the chances are that you will like to receive guidance from somebody rather than giving guidance but if you want you could also give guidance that is also uh, perfectly fine and apart from this the ninth house also deals with uh, spirituality so uh, you could take a tour to a spiritual place you know to a um, divine place you know uh, and uh, you can meet sadhus gurus and religious people there and you can elevate your consciousness so essentially this eclipse is meant to make you more learned and educated from people who are more experienced than you so either you do it by going to a university or to a guru or to a uh, teacher online or by going to a holy place that is well up to you okay so all the best upgrade yourself and go to the next level thank you so now we are going to discuss for virgo lagna so what's going on for virgo virgo lagna this transit is occurring in our eighth house now what is the eighth house eighth house is the house of so many things <laughs> eighth house is the house of the unknown it's the house of research it's the house of your know, in-laws it's the house of uh, uh, accidents it's the house of diseases okay so if this eclipse is occurring in your eighth house then uh, maybe this is a time which you can spend on reflecting upon the things that you have done in the past okay now th this does not mean that you get into depression by thinking of the things that you could not achieve okay i don't mean to say that but for Virgo, it's very important that you do a calculated assessment of your previous activities at least in the last six months to one year and see how you can not repeat uh, the same mistakes that you have been doing altogether. Eighth house can also show you know patterns because it is like a circle, it's like uh, going, going round and round in the same place. So, if there are certain bad decisions that you have taken in the past then this is the perfect time to rectify them okay because uh, you can check them if you put effort and this is the time that you should stay away from intoxicants and uh, other prohibited activities uh, from the scriptural perspective because that can give you uh, trouble in sleep and it can give you depression and anxiety so if you have a group of friends which uh, inspire you unfortunately to uh, take alcohol or watch adult material in the internet or get into any kind of uh, intoxication then it is best that you distance yourself from them otherwise uh, these habits can make you very severely addicted to certain things which uh, can be very detrimental for you and your family members in the long run and on the positive side uh, this eighth house is the house of uh, sudden gains okay so inheritance could be something which uh, could be on the cards uh, for you and apart from that uh, there could be a situation where you can win a lottery but again um, i don't encourage doing that because that can come under gambling sometimes but yeah if something happens of its own accord uh, there's no harm in accepting it and apart from that it can show stock market gains and all this and losses also so you need to be very careful uh, with the eighth house okay and on the other brighter side it can show research and um, interest to go deep into certain things that you are really passionate about so if you are passionate go deep down into something learn do the research and contemplate on the uh, on your past and do not repeat the same mistakes and be prepared for uh, keep some cash keep some money handy for some untoward incidences which can come okay or maybe you could take some insurance if you are going if you are traveling somewhere maybe you know this time maybe taking a travel insurance is a good idea okay so all the best virgos and now we come to the libra lagna people now so libra ascendance what is going on this transit for you is in the seventh house 
So what is seventh house? Seventh house is the house of uh, marriage, partnerships, uh, negotiations, deals, um, anything that you do together with other people. So if you are not married during this time, if your uh, Mahadasha or Antardasha is indicating marriage, which means <clears throat> your uh, Mahadasha or Antardasha is indicating the second house, seventh house or the eleventh house, then this is one solid time to get married. Okay, And uh, along with that, uh, if you are already married, then uh, it means that your marriage is having a new beginning. Okay. So it doesn't mean that you will remarry <laughs> again, but uh, it means that there might be certain things within your marriage which uh, you and your spouse maybe you actually need to talk out and discuss rather than uh, pretending to each other that you know oh yeah yeah that's not something which we uh, give importance to. So do not beat around the bush, do not hide under the carpet, uh, do not try to brush things under the carpet. Uh, but try to talk out things which you feel is really important for you in your married life. And it is not just important to talk out things, but it is also important to hear about the other person's opinion. Okay, <clears throat> So, um, it's very important that you focus on your married life. And from a business perspective, if there is something you are planning to start with your spouse you know some new business that could be a great 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 idea okay <clears throat> and apart from that if you are planning to start some business partnership with your friend or your colleague or somebody else also then also that could be a good idea but because this is an eclipse so be a bit careful do proper background check and do not ignore your gut feeling if you feel that somebody might cheat you then do not get into that partnership but yeah, if you are really confident that uh, somebody is your good friend and your well-wisher and you both can complement each other, then well, go and uh, start that business. You can also uh, do some merger and acquisition if you are already established. So basically, this is the uh, eclipse which will encourage you to do things together with other people to merge yourself with others okay and then grow your profit so this is what is uh, very much recommended for Libra Lagna so use this time properly build your network circle expand and communicate and be successful okay thank you so now we have Scorpio Lagna so for Scorpio Lagna what's going on for Scorpio Lagna well, this eclipse is in your 6th house. Well, 6th house is the house of so many things, but primarily it is the house of Saturn and Mars, which is the house of hard work, okay? Because both Saturn and Mars are Karakas for the 6th house. So, 6th house can show competition, you know, uh, difficulties, challenges, uh, trials, tribulations, you know, legal issues. But at the end of the day, it shows your ability to work hard in short. Okay, so therefore, 6th house is also Artha house, which is also the house of money and wealth and all this. So uh, if you are uh, take, thinking of going to the next level and getting the promotion then it's it's a good time for you you can do that and apart from that if you are uh, having any legal issues legal challenges then this is the best time to sort them out and uh, if you feel that there are some uh, enemies which are trying to hamper your reputation then now is the time that you actually take legal action against them okay uh, because sixth house can show uh, hidden enemies actually okay On the seventh house shows open enemies but sixth house can show hidden enemies so now is the time that you actually uh, try and clear out all the negativity that is there around you so sixth house can also show your health okay so uh, the sixth house can actually tell you that uh, there are certain patterns in your health which you need to change 
uh, to improve you know so maybe uh, get help of a dietitian get a gym trainer and uh, try to improve your health try to make those changes which you yourself know deep down inside but because of uh, <clears throat> our weakness of heart or because of our laziness we are not making those changes so uh, try your best to make those changes uh, and also the sixth house can show uh, skills so therefore you know now is the time that you should learn the upcoming skills technologies or whatever is required for your <clears throat> professional growth and once you do that then you will see that uh, you are making rapid progress when it comes to your career okay so therefore <clears throat> this is the time where you work hard you do not waste time you know track your productivity track your positivity and negativity limit your social media time and go to the next level okay thank you now we need to go to the next which is Sagittarius so for Sagittarius what is going on so Sagittarius this is an eclipse in your fifth house so what is the fifth house the fifth house is the house of learning it's the house of children it's the house of love relationships it's the house of speculation so now the question is what will happen you know there are so many things which the fifth house represents so well that will depend on your dasha so for example your uh, if you are married and uh, you are looking uh, to have your child then if you have uh, the second house or the fifth house or the eleventh house or the ninth house indicated in your dashas then uh, you might have a childbirth for you and your a uh, spouse if both of them have you know some positive indications or even if one of them has you know then um, then there could be a very high possibility <clears throat> and if you already have children and you are not intending to have more uh, then maybe this is a great time for you to explore your re existing relationship uh, with your child or with your children so uh, this means you know um, talking to them spending time with them and fifth house is also the house of hobbies so meet friends relatives family members uh, well wishers uh, and try to understand what is actually that makes you happy because fifth house is the reason why you get up in the morning as i always say so uh, from tomorrow morning at least for tomorrow ask yourself this question what is that which makes me happy what is that which gives me joy so whatever the answer is do more of it spend more time doing that okay so when you do that then you will be exceptionally happy during this eclipse and fifth house is also the house of mantra diksha from a guru so it is also possible that you might get initiated from a spiritual master who is in a bona fide uh, guru shishya parampara okay so and fifth house in general can show your hobbies you know like painting or cooking singing dancing or meeting people socializing in general so so essentially for you it's very important to have fun and uh, understand that life is not just uh, you know, taking care of everything and everybody okay it, it is also important to keep yourself happy so uh, take that vacation if required uh, spend time with your children and your loved ones and also uh, educate yourself spiritually uh, educate yourself uh, materially you know upgrade your skill set uh, fifth house is also the house of learning is the house of buddhi so you know you, you can listen to gurus and spiritual talks and scriptural learning you know that can actually help you okay so make the best use of this time be happy and discover your happiness and amplify it okay all the best sagittarius so now we we are back to capricorn again what is capricorn so for capricorn you <coughs> uh, this transit is occurring in your fourth house what is the fourth house well the fourth house is the house of the mother fourth house is the house of property the fourth house is the house of uh, learning vidya basically it can also show vehicles okay so 
it depends on what is going on in your horoscope so uh, in your horoscope if you are running uh, the dasha of the fourth house and the ninth house you know so for example if you have a planet in fourth like venus venus mahadasha and you have uh, jupiter in the ninth and jupiter antar dasha is running then <clears throat> this can mean that you are going to get some higher education in your country and if the 12th house is associated you might also leave your homeland and go to a foreign land or it can be within your country also from a one state to the other you know so somebody in new delhi come can might go to uh, chennai and do some education there get some education <clears throat> or it can also mean you know you are within your state you are moving from one city to the other okay so apart from this if you are around at the age of 30 and if you are planning to purchase your first uh, home then well maybe that could be a great time for you <coughs> and uh, if you if you uh, have the sixth house associated then it can mean that uh, you are taking buying property but through loan uh, from the government or from the banks uh, and if the eighth house is associated then it can mean that you are buying property but uh, not with bank loan but it could also mean you are buying it through uh, the help of your relatives and family members or even in-laws okay so therefore uh, another thing that you need to watch out is uh, your relationship with your mother okay so because uh, this is an eclipse which is occurring in the fourth house so your mother's health might require some attention or your relationship with your mother may come under a bit strain during this time so if you are planning to uh, go to your home then uh, maybe you need to be a bit watchful on how you talk to um, your mother or uh, are you actually uh, paying attention to what she's saying uh, not just uh, literally but also subtly okay so therefore uh, it's also a good time for vehicle purchase if venus is associated in the dasha so it can be either education or property purchase or vehicle or uh, something to do with your mother okay and what that will be that will depend on your horoscope okay so all the best capricorn make the best use of this time so now we have the last uh, last two ascendants and we are uh, back to Aquarius now. So what is Aquarius? For Aquarius, this eclipse is in your <coughs> third house. A very interesting house for an eclipse to occur. Why do I say interesting? Uh, well, because these, these, day, these days, you know, third house is actually the most important house. It is the house of no innovations it is the house of uh, social media writing journaling talking consulting speaking coaching and all these things so now is the time that you need to monetize your skills online so uh, if you know something which you are very good at and if people have also given you great feedback on it then maybe this is an excellent time for you to go and uh, you know uh, monetize your skills you know make an online course or provide one-to-one -one coaching or consulting and uh, that is how you can actually earn money from your skills or you can do it as a hobby you know in uh, uh, via youtube channel or instagram page you don't have to necessarily monetize it if you do not want to <coughs> and apart from this the third house also shows your ability to write and comprehend certain things <laughs> okay so the third house is a very important house because if you are abroad uh, then it can also show that maybe it's time for you to get a permanent residency there or even uh, a change of citizenship could also be on cards okay so if you are staying somewhere from a long time and you feel that okay maybe now i have integrated myself better into this culture and i want to get a pr or citizenship then uh, maybe this is a very good time for you to apply and uh, in your numerology is date of birth uh, if you have uh, seven so you are born on like 16th or 7th or 25th or you're born in july or you know 1987 97 either ways 
then your chances of getting a PR or citizenship of a developed country is exponentially high. Okay, so therefore capitalize on this opportunity if you are interested. And third house can also show you know short distance travels. Third house can show communication. So one thing to watch out is your communication with people, you know. So uh, watch out uh, before you react abruptly to that, you know, social media post or watch out before you send that mail you know? so be a bit careful in regards to some serious communication you know like with government authorities or do not do any kind of tax evasion or financial fraud or something like that okay <clears throat> so uh, this is something which you have to be aware of and <clears throat> once you are able to formalize things you know with your uh, tax consultant or with your maybe anybody your gym trainer so make a list of things which you think is very important and things which are not uh, in order so formalize things structure uh, give them a structure and that's how you will uh, go to the next level okay so we are here with the last group which is Pisces the last of all ascendants <clears throat> so for Pisces what's going on this transit is occurring in your second house so what is the second house second house is the house of your wealth your accumulated assets your net worth okay uh, the combination of all the money and wealth that you have in terms of stock market uh, stocks uh, cryptocurrency real estate or whatever bonds you know fixed deposits money in the bank account <clears throat> so if you include all of these and not just money it's also your you know um, wealth of your family okay wealth of relationships wealth of love care compassion your spiritual relationships everything comes under family so when this eclipse is occurring in your second house it is very important that you understand what is actually of value because second house is also the house of value so the second house is a very interesting house because it can teach you what you what you should value and what you should not okay so uh, if you feel that your life is out of balance well then maybe you can have a talk with some uh, senior family member uh, within your family who can actually help you to navigate through problems <clears throat> and now if you are facing that if you are feeling that you know you are not able to do good financially well now maybe it's a time to seek a promotion or start your own business or go to the next level by like shifting your domain okay because that can also turn your net worth gradually in the next two to three or five to ten years so whatever it takes to increase your network to improve your uh, financial condition uh, just do it and once you do it uh, you should focus on reinvesting that money into like you know safe assets and uh, you could take a bit of risk depending on your age <clears throat> so if you are in your 30s and you have some decent savings <clears throat> then maybe uh, it's a good time for you to hire a financial planner with whom you can plan your future you know upcoming 20 30 40 or 50 years even <clears throat> and if you are around in your 60s or maybe 50s preferably or late 40s you can also plan for your retirement so this is a time where you plan your finances and you talk it out with your family members and <clears throat> try to see if they can also help you they can also contribute in that or uh, you do it all by yourself but with their guidance and uh, coaching and counseling and consulting okay so expand your net worth expand your network expand your horizon and become a better person all the best thank you